through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. And through it all, through it all, it is with you. from me not to believe even when my eyes can't see in this mountain that's in front of me we'll be thrown in the midst of the sea and through it all through it all my eyes are on Mr. Jeff, you want to come up and help me take the offering, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the many blessings of life. I pray that you would bless this offering and multiply it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You are the river that runs deep. You are the one 
that I see. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You rescued me when I was lost. It was your son on that cross. Oh, hallelujah. He shed his blood for you and me, so now I can breathe. Whoa, you are the mountains that I see, you are the one inside of me. Oh, hallelujah. You are the rivers that run deep, you are the one that I see, oh, hallelujah. I lift my hands up to you towards the skies that you made blue, oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, it's your name that I call, your grace won't let me fall. Oh, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. You are the mountains that I see, you are the one inside of me. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You are the rivers that run deep. You are the one that I see. Oh, So 
living means earth like a sloppy wet kiss and my heart turns violently inside of my chest I don't have the time to maintain these regrets when I think about the way he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us all. So. Arm up. All right. Glad to see everybody. Harold, you're looking nice and springy. Yeah, I do too. Not every day, but I do today for sure. Yes, his wife is very pretty. That's right, Flo. That's your job. I'm sure you'll remember to do that. <laughs> All right, let's begin by praying and asking God to help us to understand his word as we look at a few scriptures. Perfect, thanks. Father, we love you and we thank you and we praise you. All in Jesus' name. And we look forward to hearing from you, from your word knowing that your word contains truth, all truth, before the beginning, all the way past the end, because with you there was no beginning, there was no end. You are the Alpha and Omega. You're beyond that. There's nothing that can hold you, but yet you choose our bodies, our souls, to be the host of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for making us temples. You make us temples. And Lord, today we're going to talk about being good and being righteous, of which the Bible reminds us there is no one righteous, not even one except our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yet you chose to make us righteous by imputing 
by putting on us the righteousness of your son Jesus. Lord, we don't understand why. We certainly don't understand how, but we accept it. We accept the righteousness that you see when you see us, because when you see us, you see Jesus, and you did that. You did that. You did that all for now and forevermore. We pray and thank you now in Jesus' name. Help us to understand and apply the word today. Amen. Okay, the message today is being alive in Christ. Alive. Alive means to live. Alive means to live. And when you're living, you're growing, you're achieving, you're hurting, you're um, complaining, you're being grateful, it's all of it. You know, only until we get to heaven will it be 100% utopia. Okay? And that is coming. And that's something that we really can't imagine, hence the song, I Can Only Imagine. If you can't, most of us truly can't, but if we could, we would say, I can only, I can only imagine. But one day, one day, we will, we will know. And for many, that day comes before they leave this earth. I have a very dear friend that's facing some cancer. And I'd heard about it three or four months ago, but I got to see her this week, and I got to hear a little bit of her testimony, and Carol heard it. It, it wasn't, <laughs> it was uh, nothing short of convincing. She said, I sung about it, I heard about it, I read about it. She goes, but now I'm looking at it straight in the eye, and God is real. God is faithful. My trust is my hope, I know it. She said, it's not a hope, it's a no. And we're praying that God will continue to heal her and her cancer goes up and down, but she's just, look, it's going to happen somehow, someday, some way. I'm just going to trust him. Not going to worry with it. Like a lot of things that we worry about, if we don't have control over it, then we're wasting some time. Unless you like to be entertained by, by, by being worried, you know. If that's your entertainment, I guess go ahead. But I, I don't know that that does anybody any good, including myself. So, we're going to start with Galatians 2.20. And it's going to give us our verse for the theme. And I may be the only one I didn't put in there, Cam. Is that true? Okay, that's the only one I didn't put in. We put the reference. He's going he's gonna to slam it in there for us. I have been crucified with Christ. Past tense. For the believer. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live. So if we're trying to live our way, mm -mm, we got it backwards from the beginning. You see, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. So there's a challenge, a struggle, or whatever. You can't handle it. You're not supposed to handle it. God's going to handle it. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me, who loved me, and gave himself for me. He loved me so much. Jesus himself reminded us, that to truly love a friend is to die for them. Greater man has no love than this, than to die for a friend. He loved us. He died for us. He gave himself for us and continues daily. It's a residual um, reward that God has given to us. Okay, so that's our theme being made alive. We are alive in Christ. Now, let's look back into the Old Testament. Cameron, I have um, verses, Genesis 1-1, I believe, then 126, then 131, and then chapter 6, verses 5 through 8, all together, and they should be in there. So we'll begin in the beginning, Genesis 1-1. And by the way, 
We've all learned, grew up learning, that Genesis 1-1 is the first verse in the Bible, chronologically. But it's not. It's actually John 1-1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's how it flows. My nephew taught me that, Miss Martha. It's John 1-1. In the beginning was a word, and the word was with God, and in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. That's the sequence. So Jesus, God's son, was with him in the beginning, because in the beginning was the word, and we know that the word is Jesus. And what a wonderful image that is that God gives us. Jesus is the word. Jesus is the truth. We read his word. We meditate on his word. We live in it. We, we live his word. We do his word, James reminds us. And who was James? Jesus' half-brother. Nobody knew Jesus like his brother. Nobody. On the human part. Okay? And it took him a while, but when he came around, you know it. It takes a lot of us the time to come a while, while right? Come around. Plug? Took a little while to come around, right? <laughs> You look good. You're doing good. Proud of you, man. It's a different day. Different day and age. You may have to come give your testimony one day. It may take longer than 20 minutes, but that's how you live it. That's right, Plug. That's good. That's good. Okay, Genesis 1-1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We got it? All right. Genesis 1-26. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock, over all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the earth, ground. Um, back that up, Kim. In our image. At that time, there was no body of Christ. So if we're made in God's image, it's with us in spirit. In spirit. God, the Bible teaches us that God is spirit. God teaches us, the Bible teaches us, we have a, a spirit and soul and body. So we are like God. We are made in his image by spirit. So in order for us to communicate with God spiritually at the basic level, it's, it's through our spirit. We worship with our spirit and our soul and our body, but at the very root of it is spirit. We hear a lot of people say today that they don't like religion. I'm one of them. I do like spirituality. But we have to be careful. A lot of times people will say spirituality could be anything. Spirituality does not have to include God. But that's not the worst thing. Spiritual, spirituality is when you include God with other facts than God's word. That's when it becomes dangerous. Most dangerous. Because something that doesn't claim God, oh, well, that's easy to have a contrast. But one that includes some of God in it, like the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, they add to it. So I would encourage anyone, any Christian, any um, uh, member of that church, just contrast it with the Bible. That's all you got to do. Trust, trust this. Not any preacher. Not any church. You trust this. This is what it has to line up against. This is where truth begins. This is what you can go validate anything in any thought or religion or spiritual spiritual spirituality it is about being it is we it everyone's on the right track when they're trying to connect spiritually because god is we're made in his image and at the root of that is god is spirit and we have spirit so in the beginning man was made verse one uh in in the beginning god created and verse 26 man was made it only took five verses 
Go down to 31. Let's see what happened. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good, and there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Okay. Creation's done. Now, it's rolling. Continues to grow. Five chapters and a few verses later, look what happens. Genesis 6, verse 5. The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of human heart was only evil all the time. Can you imagine that? Yes, you can. Think about it. Think, what, look at what we're seeing in this world. Um, just this week, um, a poll on the number of Americans that believe changing your body for gender purposes, physically, 20-30%? How can two out of three people that can walk and chew chewing gum at the same time, how can 20-30% to 30 of the people in this country that can drive cars, that has sense to get out of the rain, how could they support that? So maybe it's not 100% of the people, but there is a large percent of people that it appears that every inclination of the thoughts of their heart is evil. Now, my heart can think evil. I don't think I'm to the point of every inclination. And it's only by the grace of God. It's only because the Spirit of God lives in me. And it's only because I do read His Word and I do pray. And I am, I'm, a, I'm around others that do the same. But now we're looking back. The world was created perfectly. And here in Genesis 6, it's wicked. Verse 6. The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth and his heart was deeply troubled. You ever read that verse? You ever have regrets? Making wrong decisions? It's in his word. The Lord regretted that he made human beings. You think his heart was broken? Making a, creating a perfect world, providing for them, and then them worshiping idols and living for themselves and making sex a mockery. Verse 7. So the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth, the human race I have created. We worry about Russia and North Korea. God. He said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race I have created, and with them the animals, the birds, the creatures, and move along the ground, for I regret that I have made them. Right there in his word. But just as every prophetic book, God calls us into the office. God provides a way. Verse 8. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Cam, I've heard you beat Bob, Patna. Yeah. Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Now, with children's groups, they, they like that a lot more than y'all do. Oh, I'll have them running around and 
making drums and what, any cymbals, and we'll take 15, 20 minutes and doing nothing but singing. Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Thank God he did. I do. If he hadn't, I'd never got to marry Carol. I never got to have my children. I never got to have this church and my friends. I never got to experience all this. Don't ever feel guilty for enjoying this world. God made it. Don't ever feel guilty for having fellowship. God made that. We just read everything God made was good. And he actually said, when he made man and woman, it's very good. So one man caught God's attention. Let's, let's see what kind of man he was. First, the outline, Cameron. Noah was a man that lived righteous. Living righteous is one who pleases God. Remember the song? Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was living righteous. Noah took a stand for God. I was encouraged by a friend this week, do what you think God wants you to do. Don't worry what other people say. Now, how do I know what God wants me to do? From his word and through praying and from fellowshipping with those who are in his word and are praying. Noah trusted God. Noah was patient. Noah stood on God's promise. And Noah rejoiced. If I had been Noah, sorry, we'd have been blotted out. What about you? If you had been Noah. If it came down to you, you know, you're watching the football game, sometimes that runner breaks away, he gets past the first and the second and the third, and all of a sudden, there's one more guy he's got to beat. Thank God for that kicker, Noah. <laughs> Many times it's that kicker, you know. He kicked it, and everybody else ran down the field, and it's that little, little kicker. Luke's got a friend that was a kicker. He took a guy down. Hey, he might have grabbed his face mask and pulled him down, but he, took it, he put him down. It was a penalty, but it wasn't a touchdown against them. I'm not advocating people grabbing face. I don't think he intends. He just wanted to get the guy down, and he did. But Noah did it by living righteous, taking a stand, trusting God, being patient, trusting God's promises and rejoicing. That's a man I'd like to pattern my life after right there. Okay. There's a scripture for each one of these examples of his character. First, Romans 12, 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. So worship doesn't begin on Sunday. Worship culminates on Sunday. That's the crescendo of the week that we have. And since it's cyclical, it's also the beginning. So here we are right now. We're, begin we're ending the week and we're beginning the week at the same time. What a better way to do it than in worship. There is none. Offer, in order to live righteous, Offer yourself as a sacrifice and letting God live through you. Letting God incur, helping you to encourage others. Letting God helping you to forgive others. All the things that's required to make it through a week with humans. There's a ride somewhere, Six Flags or Disney World. 
One of you grandparents can help me with this one. <laughs> Somewhere it says, don't eat the human. Do y'all remember where that one is? Or something? It's one of those rides. Okie Finoki Swamp, or I don't remember where it is, but it just says, or watch out for the humans. Because you have all these animated characters in there. Don't trust the humans. <laughs> Live righteous. Had Noah not lived righteous, God, it appears he was going to call the whole thing off. You ever written a letter or something and you didn't like the way it started and you wadded it up and threw it in a trash can? But you can't live righteous. To live righteous is to offer your body as a sacrifice. Your mind, soul, everything. God... Here I am. Take me, use me, cleanse me, help me. So, live righteous. Not one thing in there says live righteous by, being, by doing good. But if you do these other things, if you offer your body as a living sacrifice, you will do good through the power of, and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Number two, take a stand. Take a stand is Romans 1, 16. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. We all go through life different times, different ages, different temperatures. At what age did you see people think God was not cool? All children love God. All children will pray. At what age did you stop praying out loud? At what age did, did you begin to be... Um, aware and worry about how you look and think and all that. There's an age. It happens between childhood and you're growing up and you begin to be self-conscious about things, about how we look or how we sound or how we act or how we respond. And then that can happen also our view of God. You know, it's not uncommon for Christians to not have conversations about God for many different reasons. To not have a conversation with an unbeliever or non-believer, you can kind of think about that and go, well, I can understand. You know, sometimes I don't want people to think I'm a goody two-shoes. It's not that I don't, I don't care if they think I'm boring. It's just that I don't want them to think that I'm better than them. Sometimes we'll do that. But when we're talking to other believers, why would we not be talking about spiritual things? Well, sometimes it's because we're in different churches and different churches highlight different things and that conversation may turn into something disagreeable, which is ridiculous. Carol's father, one of his many mantras that he gave me, agree upon the things you can agree and everything else just leave alone. There's so much that we agree on. Just agree upon that. We should never be ashamed of the gospel. If we're ever tempted to be ashamed of God, of Jesus Christ, of living the spirit-filled life, just recognize that's a trick and a lie and a deceit and a tactic of the enemy. Number three. Trust God. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. In, uh, 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 that's 3, 6. How about 5? Did I miss it? I believe I did. Thank you. Well, actually, that works. Three, five, okay. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He'll make your path straight. It's trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Trust God. 
It took Noah 100 years. 100 years to build that ark. And lots of money. And lots of rebuke. Lots of time. While there was no storm in sight. Now, some of you in this room, I know you personally. I'm, I know everybody personally almost. And I know that some of you do not wait around when you're given an assignment. I'm not going to say anybody's name, but his initials are Jeff Dunlap. It's one that I'm thinking of. If Jeff's ever given an assignment, you just be ready. If he needs more information from you, you better be ready. Can you imagine these guys building this ark? It's, it's, okay. it's 100 years off. There's no storm in sight. Preparing for a storm that you don't know when it's coming. Trust God. If God gives you a word, if God, it'll never contradict this. If God gives you a mission, it'll never contradict this. If God gives you, discover God's purpose. Discover his purpose. Ask for that mission. Ask for that vision. It may not come in the form of a letter. It, it may not come all at once. Usually, it, usually it's, it's like manna. Here, here's enough for today. And that segues into number four, be patient. James chapter one, I may have missed him too. James one, four. So being patient, there was 150, when the storm did come, it was 150 days that the water, that the rain fell. 150 days. I think we probably had 150 days last year. It was a big rainy year. And then there was another 40 after the rain that they waited. And then, you know, as the birds went out looking for dry land. And then, just to make sure, it was another seven days. So 197 days give or take a day or two, they were patient. Let perseverance faith finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. God loves to give you patience, to give us patience. You know, when I was a younger guy, I, I laughed at, I'm not sure if I ever said the thing, Whatever you do, don't pray for patience or God will test you. You know, I don't think you ever have to be afraid to ask God for anything. That's kind of silly, isn't it? Don't pray for patience or God will... Look, you pray for the desires of your heart. You pray for what you need. You pray for what you might need in the future. You don't ever have to be afraid of anything. And I know that's said kind of in jest, but I thought I'd just call it out today. Number five, God's promise. We'll not read this, but we remember at the end of the story, the, the rainbow. God promised he'd never destroy the earth again by flood. So trust God's promises and all the promises he gives us. And then to rejoice. Philippians 4, 4, Cam, we'll end with that one. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. God made you. He hasn't forgot you. He will never forget you. He has provided for you. Provided for you. He will provide for you now and forevermore. You are alive in Christ. So live like you are and enjoy it. And just for a little bring us back to reality. What if we had been Noah? Would God have seen, oh, there's one. Maybe, maybe it will work. Maybe this thing will, let's give it another shot. All right. I have been crucified with Christ. No longer do I live but I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And you. Let us pray.
Father, for the words that we've read, for the words that we've spoken, for the words that we've sung, anything that is of you, we pray, would stay in our hearts and our lives and our minds now and forevermore. Anything that came from any man, this woman, Lord, uh, this morning, Lord, um, please um, just help us to forget it. We give you honor and praise now in Jesus' name. Amen. If you'll stand, we'll be dismissed today with a blessing from God's word. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Thank you for coming.